Hello, I want to start today with a question. What if all yachts, not just the new ones, had to reduce their carbon emissions by 40% by the year 2030? And what if they had to achieve net zero by the year 2050? Many owners would just laugh about this as they happily refilled their tanks with fossil fuels. Maybe a little bit of uh, greenwashing, some exotic fuels, or maybe some carbon credits on the side that they bought with Bitcoin. Meanwhile, out on the oceans, away from the marina, there's abundant and free energy that's already being used by sailboats and now by large cargo ships. And while there are a number of new technologies are now available for harnessing this energy, but the uptake in the yachting sector, aside from traditional sailboats that unfortunately tip, has been more than disappointing. It has been almost non-existent. Meanwhile, in the commercial sector, I can assure you that commercial ship owners and operators of large vessels are not laughing about this. So the question that I just posed is not hypothetical. The International Maritime Organization is requiring ship owners to reduce their carbon intensity in shipping by 40% by the year 2030. And the IMO is going to impose what is effectively a carbon tax on the owners and vessel operators that did not reach these goals. The result is that in the commercial shipping sector, ship owners are scrambling to install wind propulsion systems on their ships. There are about 60 large ships right now that have been retrofitted with what they're calling wind assist. So these are a variety of different kinds of very large sails that are on Maersk vessels and other large ships that are plying the oceans. 2026, there should be another 100 very large ships that will be retrofitted with wind assist. And by 2030, there will be well over 3,000 ships that have been retrofitted. The retrofitted ships are experiencing less fuel burn and saving a lot of money. And that is more than paying for the cost of the wind sails. But we now know that those savings are not near what can be achieved if a vessel is actually designed and built from the outset to be wind assisted or wind powered. The French built a rocket transport ship called Canapé that goes from France to South America on a regular route across the Atlantic. It's been operating for two years and so now we have proof of concept. It operates on a commercial schedule cruising at about 16.5 knots and it has achieved 13.6 knots with four wing sails under wind propulsion alone. The fuel savings are meaningful and a yacht that is designed and built for sail propulsion would achieve much higher efficiencies. But our large yacht owner here is still laughing. He's thinking, no way. How am I going to heat the pool? How am I going to keep the AC set down to wine chilling temperatures? And how do I keep all the big screen TVs with surround sound going in all the cabins 24 hours a day? While yacht owners may not be feeling any monetary pressure to reduce their fuel consumption, they have a new concern. The popular press is now paying attention to mega yacht, mega conspicuous consumption. And as I heard at Metz from the head of sales at one of the major Dutch shipyards, while these owners may not care, their children do care. And so many owners are looking for new solutions. Ammonia, methane, hydrogen are all being promoted by the engine manufacturers in the shipyards. Inevitably, when they install these dual fuel systems, they're putting in full diesel tanks to go wherever they need to go in the event that they won't be able to find their exotic fuel, which in many cases they will not be able to do. And if you're interested in hydrogen power and fuel cells, I encourage you to ponder why this smart owner never even set foot on the yacht that he spent three quarters of a billion euros to have built. When that yacht was being built in Holland, the yachting press was going nuts about hydrogen and fuel cells, how this was the best thing since sliced bread. I worked for Blumenvoss in Hamburg, Germany, and 20 years ago, one of our divisions, HDW, was building hydrogen fuel cell submarines for the German Navy. And this was 20 years ago, and it had been going on for years before that. So this is not new technology. And one thing that uh, we knew from building the submarines was that you store the hydrogen on the outside of the hull because hydrogen is really deadly. It can explode and you don't want to be inside a steel hull with it. We had this new client. His address was steve at apple.com. And I went back and forth with Steve 
for months trying to convince him that it might be a great idea if somebody in the tech industry did something with hydrogen and fuel cells and how there'd be uh, how the only emission would be H2O and all the positive things which in retrospect I must say it really was a bad idea but it just seemed like a cool thing to pitch. Punchline in all my conversations with Steve about this before he went to FedShip and built his yacht there was this is a science project and that was a good call. It was a science project. It's not practical. Don't do it. And if you have the time and the inclination, instead of reading the popular press articles about ammonia, methane, hydrogen, and other exotic fuels, I encourage you to read the white papers that have been written by the class societies, in particular DNV and Lloyd's, and find out what is really involved, what the dangers are versus the benefit versus the cost of these exotic fuels. So we all know that wind power is the oldest story in ocean navigation. I'm sure that many sailors, like myself, are very aware of the new technologies, starting with the America's Cup boats that can hit 55 knots, to Tom Perkins' Maltese Falcon, up to the 106 meter Black Pearl that can hit 30 knots. With hydro generation under sail, the controllable pitch props can generate electricity to carry the hotel load and eliminate the emissions under sail. They can also add energy to the battery banks so that the vessel can have electric propulsion from the batteries while it's in port. Taking this a few steps further is Project Zero that was built by Vitters in Holland. This yacht has no carbon fuels on board and only electric motors. It has two azipods that generate electricity under sail and provide electric propulsion from the batteries when maneuvering in port. It's a simple solution. And as always, the sailors are ahead of the motor boaters in terms of harnessing ocean energy. The reason why we should all pay more attention to hydro generation is that an underwater turbine that is 60 times smaller than a wind turbine will generate three times more energy. So once you get hooked up to wind propulsion, the water that's going under the hull is another tremendous source of energy. Maybe you're gonna lose a knot or two of speed, but you're gonna have the ability of going into port using the battery stored energy that you generated during the day. Each of the wing sails on a large vessel can deliver over 3,000 horsepower. Captains who take advantage of this can expect to achieve fuel savings on ocean crossings starting at about 50%. If they plan their trip well, take advantage of the trade winds, ocean currents, they can make ocean passages burning no fuel. Hotel loads can be carried by hydro generation. In addition, photovoltaic cells that are on the wing sails and also on parts of the deck can deliver the equivalent of a half ton of fuel that would normally feed the generators during the day. There is all kinds of new software and system controls that are being developed by companies like Kongsberg that manage the forces from the wind and the wing sails. They're also regulating ballast, stabilizers that recuperate energy, the hydro generation, the HVAC draw. In addition, they're drawing from the satellites, the wind velocities, currents, weather predictions, and all this data is analyzed in real time, creating efficiencies for your voyage. This new technology, all the R&D that went into it, the manufacturing facilities that can now deliver and support this equipment has all been paid for by the commercial shipping industry. Along with government subsidies and grants, the yacht industry traditionally has always followed behind the commercial industry and basically any technological innovation that we can think of probably started in the commercial sector, either in cargo or in passenger ship. I go to a lot of conferences like METS and the different boat shows, and it certainly appears to me that there's pushback against uh, using wind. I'm not sure why, but I will continue to advocate for it. And I'm gonna bring more information because we're building one of these vessels and I will uh, keep you updated as we go along because the technology is changing monthly. There are new energy storage solutions with some new batteries that are coming out. And this is a really exciting time for the odd industry. So I'm looking forward to being part of this and I will bring you the information as I come across it.